Zuli is a game that I got a review copy of at UKGE. And uh, just a note, you guys, um, if you've been watching my videos for quite some time, you know that I always mention if something is a review copy or if I paid for it. So this was a review copy. So Zuli uh, apparently was the hit of UKGE last year, but somehow I missed it. So this came out in 2021. It's designed by Chris Prescott. Prescott and the art is done by Chris Prescott and it's published by Unfringed Games. It's for one to six players. This is a uh, closed drafting hand management uh, set collection game. So kind of similar to Sushi Go but I would say much more fun and fierce than Sushi Go. <laughs> so in Zuli, I don't know if it's available in the US. I hope it is. I know um, it's a really good game and I really really enjoyed it. So you each player is going to have so you have different animal cards and basically different animal cards and different enclosure cards so you basically are trying to build various habitats and closures for the different types of animals but only certain animals can go together and you also have to be mindful of space so for example everyone starts with a new plot card this will indicate how much space is available and which different types of habitat are available in this enclosure so this one includes plains, jungle, and water. But there are certain other habitats like pond, which is all water. Um, there are certain habitats which may include, you know, multiple types of, so open air island, that again includes all three, so, and so on. And then different animals can sometimes go in two different habitats. So this one can go in either a jungle or a water. You don't necessarily have to put it in both. But for example, if you have a hippo, if you put the hippo in an enclosure that includes both, it will go from being fierce to friendly. So each animal has a friend, uh, a type that indicates whether it's fierce or friendly. So friendly animals can go with other friendly animals. Fierce animals can only be placed in enclosures with other fierce animals of their type. Um, so, and typically, so again, you cannot have fierce and friendly animals together because a fierce animal would eat the friendly animal unless you add an upgrade to your enclosure, which would allow them to be together, which is the well-fed upgrade card. So well-fed will allow you to place fierce and friendly animals together. Let me see if I can find one. Well-fed. So it says traits can be ignored because typically you cannot place a fierce and a friendly animal together. So basically, uh, depending on player count, actually, I don't know if it depends on player count, but in the first round, you are going to, yeah, it does depend on player count. So like, for example, in a three player game, I've played this twice as a two player game and once as a three player game. So in a three player game in year one, it's played over three years. In year one, you're going to be dealt nine cards. So on your turn, well, it's, everyone's turn simultaneously you're going to pick a card and then pass so you're just going to keep on picking and passing until you end up with nine cards so you know similar to sushi go in that respect um and then at the end of that phase then it's time to develop so you're going to start placing down your different habitats and your animals if you cannot place an animal uh, you will lose points equal to the point value of the animal. So you want to try to make sure that you get enough enclosures to place all of your animals. So new plots, again, hold six animals. Um, you want to try to add uh, this uh, upgrade to a new plot if you can, because typically a new plot will not score unless it's full. So it says does not score unless full. So you have to have animals equaling six in order, six space in order to score it. But this will allow you to score it even if it's not full. Um, so when you are during the develop phase, placing down enclosures and animals, just keep in mind that any uh, upgrades you place, which are the gray cards, cannot be moved in subsequent rounds. So if you attach, attach an upgrade to in an enclosure, that must remain from round to round, but animals can be moved around from round to round. Again, if you cannot place an animal because you don't have the space for it, or there's just some kind of you know uh, trait conflict, so then you will lose points for it unless you have a holding pen. So there is a holding pen that you can store one animal in and it will hold up to the biggest type of animal so it has a space of six but it can only hold one animal and it can hold animals that need all different habitat types so the largest animal in this game is an elephant which takes up six space 
so the elephant can go in the holding pen. So this will allow you to store animals uh, from round to round without losing points because if I could not place this elephant, then at the end of the round when we score, because you score at the end of each round, I would lose five points. So basically, after you've done the pick and pass, you are then going to play all of your cards, you know, put down your habitat types, put down your upgrade cards, try to place all of your animals following all the placement rules, you know, putting fierce with only other fierce animals of their kind, friendly with friendly, and so on, and then you will score. So scoring, you are going to, you know, sometimes animals may increase in scoring, so for, or decrease. So for example, this grizzly bear, uh, typically it's worth a three but it will score a value of uh, plus one if kept alone in an enclosure so if it's alone it will score four so you are then going to take the value of the animal and multiply it by the enclosure type so for example open air island uh, if it's the only animal there it's four points times two so that's eight points for this so then you're going to score your enclosures your animals and then start the next round and in the next round you will have one last card so in round two you will have eight cards do the whole pick and pass thing again you can move around animals but you can't move around upgrades and then in third round you'll have uh, seven cards I believe and then in a three-player game and then, then do that whole thing again and then score and then whoever has the highest score wins it's a really good game I absolutely love this game so that's why I've played it three times already it's really really good it's so much better in my my opinion than a game like Sushi Go. It's way more difficult. Um, it can get really thinky because like you really have to be mindful of the different traits of the animals and the space you have available. It is so freaking good. Absolutely love this game and I'm just really happy to have been able to get a review copy of this game. So really good. Um, it does if I have a promo card that I received while I was at UKGE which I will show you. The promo card is this unicorn. And the unicorn says, immediately win the game if kept in an enclosure with each of the following animals, elephant, grizz grizzly bear, and jellyfish. This would be so hard to achieve because the unicorn itself requires a three space. So it takes up three spaces. And then an elephant takes up six spaces and a grizzly bear takes up, I can't remember how many spaces, let's see if I can find it. So a grizzly bear takes up three space. So you need a really big enclosure and a jellyfish. Jellyfish takes up one space, I think. Yeah, so you're going to need a really big enclosure and you're going to need to have the well-fed um, upgrade in order to be able to keep uh, fierce with uh, friendly animals together. Um, so yeah, that would be really hard to achieve. So I can see why this card would allow you to win the game immediately because you would basically be focusing all your efforts on just uh, achieving that card, like winning that card. So that would be really, really difficult. So yeah, so that is just a promo card. In all the games I've played, I have not played with the promo card just because, um, you know, I think it's really hard to achieve and, you know, people would just end up focusing all their energy, I think, on that promo card. So, so yeah, so keep an eye out for Zuli. Uh, again, it came out in 2021, but I, of course, did not learn about this game until just this year, but I really, really like it. It is really good. Um, I don't know if it's available in the U.S. I know that one of my friends wants to buy it, so she did tell the publisher to make it available in the U.S. So maybe they will start shipping it to the U.S. to retail stores here. So yeah, and it comes with a score pad for you to keep track of each round and then just a small rule book. Yep. So that is Zuli. Really good.